But we begin tonight in New York City, where Donald Trump, fresh off his New Hampshire primary victory, making him the all but certain Republican presidential nominee, addressed a much smaller crowd today, a nine-member federal jury in the second civil defamation trial brought by writer E. Jean Carroll. A separate jury last year found Trump liable for both sexually abusing Carroll in the late 1990s and defaming her in recent years. Yeah, let's just take a moment to remember that. The presumptive Republican presidential nominee is someone who has been found liable for sexual abuse. He was MIA during that first trial, but this time Trump was clamoring to take the witness stand, which lasted all of three minutes because there was not much Trump could say at this point. That's because the judge told Trump there were no do-overs. And because, the prior because of the prior jury's verdict, which was unanimous, Trump entered this courtroom still liable. The only question this jury has to decide is how much money Trump will have to pay Carol for the defamatory statements he made while president and in his continuing attacks. To be honest, that's probably to Trump's benefit, because any time he has testified or sat for a deposition and said anything other than, I plead the fifth, he just makes his lawyer's jobs that much harder. The jury today was provided with some of his deposition from the first defamation case in which Trump publicly claimed he could have never done anything to Carol because she was supposedly not his type. And he said this. I don't even know who the woman, let's say, I don't know who, it's Marla. You say Marla's in this photo? That's Marla, yeah. That's, that's my wife. Which woman are you pointing to? No. Here. Carol. Oh, is that? The person oh, okay. you just pointed to was oh, Eugene Carol. Who is hmm. I'm, I'm sure that was just an honest mistake. And those attacks on Carol that I mentioned, well, they have continued to this very day on the campaign trail and feverishly on social media. Just last night, in a span of 20 minutes, Trump posted more than three dozen times about Carol, including some of the same defamatory statements that brought him to court in the first place. Again, I have to bring up that this is the presumptive Republican presidential nominee who literally posted every 30 seconds attacking an 80-year-old woman who he was found liable for sexually abusing. This is how he is spending his time. And you'd think Trump would learn a thing or two from seeing what happened to his former lawyer Rudy Giuliani's performance in his defamation trial last year, brought by the two Georgia election workers, Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss. Giuliani also showed disdain for the plaintiffs, repeating the same defamatory statements outside the courtroom while the trial was underway. In that case, a jury awarded the mother and daughter duo nearly $150 million in damages. As for Trump... He will be back in the courtroom tomorrow morning for the closing arguments, and the jury could start its deliberations by lunchtime. And if this jury works as fast as the last one, which returned its verdict in just under three hours, we could very well know the results before the day is over. Joining me now is MSNBC legal analyst Lisa Rubin, who was in the courtroom today. Paul Butler, former federal prosecutor and professor at Georgetown School of Law. And David K. Johnson, David K. Johnston, author of The Big Cheat, and the founder of DCReport.org. Thank you all for being here. Lisa, let me go to you first. Why was that testimony only three minutes? Testimony was only three minutes, Joy, because Judge Kaplan had already made some rulings that really circumscribed what Donald Trump could permissibly testify to. And chiefly, he said that she, he couldn't testify that the defamation wasn't, in fact, defamatory. He couldn't testify that the sexual assault didn't happen. And he also couldn't testify to a number of other things that he wanted to testify to, including, for example, her sexual history or proclivities. And so that really limited Donald Trump in terms of what he could permissibly say. Notwithstanding that, Judge Kaplan wasn't satisfied that his instructions would be enough. He subjected Alina Haba to what we call a proffer, where he asked her to explain, what questions do you intend to ask your client today? And how do you expect that your client is going to answer that? And one of the things I thought was most interesting about that was Judge Kaplan wanted to know, have you personally conveyed to your client the consequences of defying my orders? And do you understand from your client that he's going to answer the way that I have laid out to you is the acceptable path? 
Alina was clear that she had given those instructions personally to former President Trump. What she was less clear about and, in fact, evasive about was whether Trump had in turn, promised her that he would stick to the script, so to speak. And I think that's really telling because Alina Haba herself knows full well that her client can't be controlled. And she was effectively signaling to Judge Kaplan today, Your Honor, I know I can't control my client. That's why you and I have to go through this exercise right now. It is, it is really stunning, uh, Paul. Just, I'm just going to put up just a few of the texts this week. ABC, I get even, um, you know, but this is against Nikki Haley. Uh, no, he's, I'm sorry, these are the wrong ones. He's a Nikki Haley. Never mind. He, basically, he attacked this woman every 30 seconds on his fake social media, his pretend Twitter. He just keeps attacking her and attacking her and attacking her. That's not these attacks. We won't put them up. Um, in the midst of a defamation trial, when Rudy Giuliani did that, he ended up being lighter in the in the wallet by $150 million. That's right. So it was three minutes of testimony. It was three minutes of an epic fail. Not only has Trump defamed this woman outside of the courtroom, he defamed her in answering the first question. The first question was, do you stand by your testimony in the deposition? He said, yes, that was a false accusation. Once again, he's lying about this woman who he sexually assaulted. Juries love when the defendant takes the stand. It's a chance for them to size him up. All so right. how did Trump kind of come across? He was not remorseful. He was defiant. He was disrespectful of the judge. After the three minutes, the judge basically told him to sit down and shut up. Will the jury remember that when they decide how much money Trump has to pay Miss Carroll? I believe they will. You mentioned uh, Shea Ross, uh, Ruby Freeman, their defamation case against Rudy Giuliani. They were asking for a few million dollars. Right. A lot of people thought that was too much. The jury came back with almost $150 million. And just to explain, I mean, the, the punitive damages, right, if, if they're around like $10 million, because the first time she got like $5 million, sure. the, first, uh, the first defamation case uh, that uh, E. Jean Carroll got. And then on top of that, the jury can say, here is, the, is the, the punitive charges, but here is for her pain and suffering. Exactly. So the punitive damages are about what will it take to make to this make man stop. never lie about another person who's a victim of sexual assault, especially someone that he himself has sexually assaulted. And if we want to think about the $5 million verdict, that was about uh, 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 comments that Trump made when he was not president. This damages award will be about what Trump said when he was president of the United States. In other words, when he had the biggest megaphone right. in the world, and he used that megaphone to lie about a woman who he himself sexually assaulted. assaulted. Uh, David K. Johnson, it's because he has no self-control. I just want to play the infamous Access Hollywood tape and then the way that he responded to that tape in the first trial about whether or not he sexually assaulted E. Jean Carroll. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. <laughs> I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the <laughs> I can do anything. That's true with stars. It's true with stars that, that they can grab women by the Well, that's what, it's, if you look over the last million years, I guess that's been largely true. Not always, but largely true. Unfortunately or fortunately. And you consider yourself uh, to be a star? I think you can say that, yeah. The mind reels, David. Well, I think Donald actually has a strategy here with his doubling, tripling, quintupling down in his attacks on E. Jean Carroll. I think he's hoping the jury awards far more than $10 million because then he can go out and say, see, it's further evidence. The system is against you. He can say it's a New York jury, which of course is code for they're not Christian and they're not white. And that will appeal to his base, but it won't broaden his support, which is what he needs. But Donald here doesn't expect to ever pay this, just as he doesn't believe he'll ever go to jail. Doesn't mean that in his jumbles mind, jumbled mind, he's also not terrified. He is. But I think his goal here is get an enormous award from this jury so that he can use it to stir up his base. It, Lisa, is that, I mean, you're nodding. It, 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 is that what it appeared as you just watched the antics of not just him, but his lawyers, that it's designed to provoke this judge and this jury to make a giant award? 
Yes and no. Joy, I think they know that a massive award is coming. I don't think they are purposely trying to provoke the judge. What I'm nodding in response to is I share David's belief that they are deeply scared about this verdict. The question is why, and it's about how much cash Donald Trump has. Today, in addition to excerpts from his testimony previously in this case, they also played excerpts from the deposition he gave in the New York Attorney General's civil fraud case. And in that deposition from April of last year, Donald Trump goes on and on about his brand value, about the value of his properties, mm. about his portfolio, <laughs> and at one point says, I have over $400 million in cash. Well, let's work backwards. We know that the attorney general has asked for more than $370 million in disgorgement in that yeah. civil fraud case. I believe here that we could be looking at a high eight-figure or even in excess of $100 million in a total verdict. That is, if you look at the compensatory damages for the damage to her reputation, as well as the pain and suffering, which is a part of compensation to E. Jean Carroll for her injuries, and then you think about the punitives, which is what is it going to take to make him shut up and stop, I do believe that this jury could could award somewhere in the high eight figures to over $100 million. And of course, those two numbers together, those are more than the $400 million in cash that Donald <laughs> Trump famously bragged that he had. If he has to liquidate things to be able to pay damages in both cases, that's a situation that leaves him and his aides fearful, even though they are pretending they are not.